Hello, it's Dr. Gymnatis again from Cardiovascular Interventions here in Orlando. And this video is about a loop recorder. You may have been asked to have one of these inserted in you. And it is inserted under local anesthesia right here in the office, where we give a patient a small little lidocaine bleb on the chest wall and insert it into the subcutaneous tissue. And there's no stitches. There is no anesthesia other than local anesthesia and very little pain. And this little gadget will sit under the skin and it's on top of the heart and its purpose is to monitor the heart rhythm. So because it's such a little device, it has a very small capacity of memory. So what it does is it will record any abnormal rhythms. So let's say a patient is having extremely slow heartbeats, a greater than three second pauses, pause in the heartbeat, and they get lightheaded or dizzy, then this thing will detect it and store that information inside the chip. If the patient is having fast heartbeats, let's say the patient's got a rapid atrial fibrillation or multiple episodes of SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. It will record it and store it. And then it will download it through a little device that is given to the patient. And at midnight, it can also automatically download into the system and I can see the rhythms in my office. It's an amazing little piece. So the patient is given a small receiver which they plug into the wall. Some of the devices have a little cell phone and it automatically transfers the data into that. If a patient doesn't have any arrhythmias, let's say the heart rate is completely normal and it's within the normal parameters, it will not transfer the data because everything is normal. So it's programmed to detect only abnormal rhythms, atrial fibrillation, pauses, tachycardia. So that's what a loop record is. So who would we put this loop recorder into? We put it into patients who are complaining of fainting, lightheadedness, dizziness, and you think that they're having an arrhythmia. That means slow heartbeats. Or they're having a lot of palpitations, rapid heartbeats. And you want to find out what kind of rhythm is this? How often is this patient having atrial fibrillation? Or is the atrial fibrillation now gone? So we can even use this to monitor patients who are already diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. And we put it in now to see how much atrial fibrillation they're getting. After an ablation therapy, for example, then the atrial fibrillation's gone. We also put one of these in them. Why? Because we want to make sure the atrial fibrillation is not coming back. Because if we know that the atrial fibrillation is not coming back, then I can safely stop anticoagulation as well. So there are multiple indications for this. And I'm going to tell you a few stories. I had a lady who was having a few palpitations, but then nothing much to write home about. And one day she fell down and broke her hip. And she had no warning. She didn't trip over. She just suddenly passed out and broke her hip. We inserted one of these in her, and then we found that she was having long pauses where her heart just stopped beating. And then we put a pacemaker in her. Another example, a patient came in, had a stroke, and we didn't know why this patient got a stroke. A stroke was from a blood clot in the brain. So the patient came here, and we inserted one of these in her because we were suspecting that she's having atrial fibrillation. And sure enough, Three months later, it showed that she was having a few hours of atrial fibrillation. So now we knew that when she goes into atrial fibrillation, she makes a blood clot in her heart and it took off and caused her stroke. So it changed our management. We put the patient on a blood thinner. So there's another indication for the loop recorder. Another patient came who already had ablation done a year ago. Patient's feeling fine but wants to come off anticoagulation because of another serious diagnosis that the patient had. So we said, okay, fine, but we don't know whether you're gonna go back into atrial fibrillation or not. So we inserted one of these. And sure enough, six months later, there was no atrial fibrillation. So we stopped the blood thinners and we were done. So this little device 
has a battery life of approximately two and a half to three years. Then after that, if the battery is dead, it can even stay in the patient. As long as it's not bothering them, and most patients it doesn't bother them. But I often take them out. And to do that, it's a little bit of anesthesia, and I just make a smoke cut, use my pinches, grab it, and pull it right out, right here in the office. So this is a loop recorder, folks. It's very, very helpful little technologically advanced device that helps us monitor patients better, more accurate diagnosis, safer medicine, and it comes at a little inconvenience only. So I hope you found this helpful. If you're finding this helpful, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.